Okay, we've been asked by several people to put up a video for you showing how we built the rocket launch frame. Uh, so what we've got is, it's just regular PVC pipe. It's been cut to dimensions that we chose. We chose it because as you can see right now with the two top parts unscrewed, it fits in the back of the car nice. Uh, laying on the ground over there are the two pieces that screw in. What it is is PVC pipe with normal off the shelf from Lowe's or, or Home Depot uh, PVC fittings. Lowe's in our area is much better as the Home Depot employee told us. Uh, Lowe's does better inventory control of parts. The vertical piece was just a way to try and get some more air capacity without taking up more square footage. The tricks are, you see the valve down here? That's a normal tire stem valve. Take a PVC cap drill a hole in it and then use rubber cement which lubricates on the way in and then seals the air. Then that just fits into the rest of the pipe. They're all used primer, PVC primer and then PVC cement. Uh, we have some other tricks. Here we have a regular air pressure gauge. It helps us when we're filling up the frame to make sure we don't overfill. Standard launching is done with these valves where you can see it's just a quarter turn stopcock valve and it's a PVC normal valve that's in the sprinkler section or the PVC fitting section of your home improvement store. The addition we added on this one is we have two solenoid sprinkler valves and they have a screw fitting so you have to find a screw fitting to your normal slip joint PVC pipes and then you can screw in the piece. We use Teflon tape on all the PVC screw joints so that when it's screwed together we don't get air leakage and this frame will hold a pressure for at least a couple hours of 60 to 70 psi. When you buy your PVC pipe, make sure you check the PVC pipe for any pressure ratings. It'll say on it what the PSI is that that pipe can handle. So now we're going to go ahead and screw the frame together and show you the assembled frame and how, what a rocket looks like when you build it. The launch mechanism for the sprinkler valves, you have to buy the solenoids and then there's actually a power supply that comes in the sprinkler section that goes with the solenoid valves. You can see it, that's the power supply and it's just routes up directly positive to, or it's AC, so two wires to two wires. What we did was we put it through a switch, a normal household switch, and then the switch goes to two push buttons on the side of the box. So we can launch either sprinkler valve and when it's not being used you can switch the switch off which takes off the power and puts it in what we call safe mode for launch. So when kids are launching it you keep it in safe mode until you're ready to launch then they put it in arm then they push the button. So those solenoids go into the side of the sprinkler and there when, it, when you power it up it pulls a solenoid backward which releases a valve allowing the air to flow. So they screw in there and then the top part the pipe screws in and then you're ready for launch. All right, so we've got it together now. The solenoid valves are screwed in. You can see the wires. The wires normally stretch out so the child who's launching can be further away from the rack. Up here, we've chamfered the edge on the PVC pipe so that when a rocket slips on, it doesn't catch on the PVC. The rocket, sometimes when they're on here, you want to make sure no tape is on the body of the tube and stuck to it and you want to make sure the nose cone is strong. Often what happens is the nose cone will blow off, the body stays on, so you want to make sure the kids are standing far back. Now on making the rockets, we have different parts we use. We often have a PVC pipe the same diameter as the launch rod, and we have the kids make it on here. You can see this is half inch, scheduled 40, and on the longer piece it'll say PSI. Materials, chipboard, like from cereal box, or in this case it's from a tomato can box. Paper was what we first started with, a newspaper, actually works the worst. And then at a camp we taught recently, a mom came up with cardstock. It actually seems to be almost the best, it's easy to get, you don't have to save all your recycling. So to take it, you put it on the rod, you wrap it around, and then you can use uh, masking tape, duct tape, any kind of strong tape. Electrical tape does not work, electrical tape flexes too much. You only need one layer of the paper and you want to have it tight enough that there's not going to be a lot of air escaping but not too tight that it sticks so this one can go a little bit tighter so it's on there then you can take the tape and this is the the biggest cost item in making rockets but the beauty is you can make as many rockets and experiment as much as you want so you're going to take the tape around the paper 
and there is a NASA site that does a great job of showing how to model the rockets so you can see the effect of fins, the effect of different nose cones, and you can actually do a launch with an air-powered rig simulating the PSI and everything you're going to have. So what I'm going to do is tape it going a little bit around it, getting a sliver in the process, going a little bit around it and overlapping just about half the tape. This is real cheap duct tape. You can get better duct tape and you get a better hold. And it also doesn't stick on itself as much. So run all the way up. And no, we're not going to launch today. There's other launch tapes on our site. You run all the way up, running out of memory space on our camcorder. And when you're done, you want to make sure you come around the top and seal the air. So what I'm going to do is do a air seal first and then come back for the nose cone. Because like that, there's less chance of the nose cone coming off. The nose cone is important. If you launch without nose cone and fin, you will not get as good of a launch. Beauty doesn't matter. Looks don't matter. But you do need both fins and nose cone. If you don't have fins, it'll somersault. So then you take cardstock, create a normal size fin, normal shape fin, and tape it on, and you're good to go. You can see it's pretty stiff on there, but it'll come off with enough air.